More than three months after a 15-year-old Kawan Charles died in Louisiana, one of the last people to see him alive is now under arrest. Janet Irvin faces a felony charge of failure to report a missing child along with contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Hey, what's going on, my good people? We back at it. And I know y'all heard by now, there's been an arrest made in the case of Kawan Charles, a.k.a. Bobby. And they arrested Janet Irvin. And understand this, we've never trusted Janet. Janet has always been on our radar for various reasons. And we're going to discuss that in this video. So, come on, ride with me. I get off of work at like noon uh, Friday. So, we go out to Baldwin, we pick him up. In the very beginning, Janet told us that she went and picked Bobby up. Okay? And then this footage right here came out. And what we seen was him actually waiting on her to pick him up. He wasn't forced. He wasn't kidnapped. He went voluntarily. Okay? And that's what this video showed us. So we clear on that part. And then we know at some point Bobby made his way back to uh, Janet's trailer. So Janet took him to her house. Okay? And then days later, he's dead. That's a problem. We don't know what happened in between. Hmm? Now, Janet told us that she got off at noon and she went to Baldwin to pick up Bobby. Now, we seen Bobby on tape. What time was it? About 1.40? So, she got off at noon and then went and picked up Bobby. And Gavin had to be with her, so I'm thinking she had to stop by the house. Because when we seen them on tape, Gavin is with them. So, it sounds like she got off at noon, went home, and then they went and picked up Bobby. And I was like, damn, where she work at? She got off at noon on a Friday? <laughs> you know, I was just curious. But... At the end of the day, she got off at 12, went home, because I think that's what she did. She went home, and then her and Gavin went and got Bobby. And I'm like, I mean, I know when I get out of work, I ain't trying to drive no 30 minutes to go get nobody. I'm just saying. I mean, unless, was this already planned? Is that why she got off early? I mean, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm just saying. Now, Bobby made it back to this trailer, and they was kicking it. Kicking it. And I told y'all in the other video, it sounded like Janet, Janet House was spot. Gavin had the type of parents that allowed his friends to come over there, drink, smoke, kick it. They probably over there having sex and everything. Y'all know what kind of parents I'm talking about? Hmm? And when the... uh investigators talked to Gavin. This is what Gavin told him. Listen to this. Does he, he smoke something or did he I mean, yeah, he smoke something. That was it. Now, that was Gavin that you heard talking. 17-year-old Gavin. Janet's son. And when asked if Bobby did any drugs, y'all heard him. He said he smoked some weed. That was it. That was it. Okay? And, and I have a problem with that because when Janet was interviewed by the investigators, she told them that Bobby smoked some weed and was high on hallucinogens when he left her house. And I'm like, hallucinogens? Like what? You know, I kept hearing mushroom being thrown around. And and let me let me just put a disclaimer out there, okay? Cuz I love all my people. But when I first heard like the mushroom, the whole mushroom story in the mix, I was like, "What?" I was like, "Black people do mushrooms?" I ain't going to even lie. That's what I was, that's what I was saying. Black people do mushrooms? It didn't, you know, and I'm not saying no black person can can do mushrooms. I'm just saying, I don't know any. Okay. 
So we got Gavin saying he only smokes some weed. But then we got Janice talking about he smoked some weed and he was high with something else. Hmm? All I could think is somebody lying. Why don't their stories match? You know? I mean, it just makes you wonder. But the uh, when the toxicology report came back, it showed that the only thing in his system was a little bit of THC, which is found in weed. And we know he was smoking weed, so yeah, we expected that. But then there was a little bit of alcohol. So he was drinking, too. Why didn't Janet and Gavin say anything about drinking? See what I'm saying? They just, they, they leaving out too much. And it don't make sense. Hmm? Why did Janet want us to believe that he had some hallucinogenic drug in his system? Hmm? And even if Bobby uh, did mushrooms, even if there's a hallucinogenic substance in those mushrooms called psilocybin. And if you look right here, it remains in your hair for up to 90 days. They found Bobby in four. Hmm? And let's not forget about the lady who called Roxanne, Bobby's mother. Remember this? Hi. Hi, this is Roxanne Nelson. You want me to call you? Yes, ma'am. There go them damn mushrooms again. And this lady that called Roxanne, her son was the one giving her the information. And remember, I was like, how would he know anything about some mushrooms if he wasn't there? It didn't make sense. And I told y'all, she sounded like a mother who was out here trying to clear her son's name. And why? If he ain't had nothing to do with nothing. Or if he don't know nothing. Now, this time around, listening to that audio, she said that um, her son told her that Janet, Gavin, and his, his stepfather was all off the mushrooms. And remember, she made it a point to be like, oh, uh, not your son. You know? But one thing that I noticed was that she said her son was like, they was gone off them mushrooms, and when they got back, he left. Think I'm lying? Rewind it. So what that told me was, if, if when they got back, he left, that means he was already at the trailer. So then I'm like, well, is he trying to tell us that Gavin and, and Janet was how mushrooms when they went and picked Bobby up. Or he didn't leave right away when they got back. He was there for a minute to see them tripping off mushrooms. He needs to be questioned by police ASAP. When Gavin spoke to the police, he confirmed that him and Bobby was together that day. And now we know they were smoking and drinking, you know. But he said that Bobby left later in the day. Gavin said that Bobby got up and said he was leaving. And when Gavin asked about where Bobby was going, he said after that, Bobby just disappeared. And I said before, uh, if you asked him where he was going, what did he say? Again, that part was omitted. What did he say? Did he just walk out? What did, I mean, what happened? 
But that's what Gavin told the police. But then Janet told them that Bobby had fallen asleep and when he was awoken, he became combative and said he was going to harm himself. And I was like, what? Again, it don't, their stories don't match. You know? So now she's saying Bobby was asleep and then it sounded like somebody woke him up. Who woke him up? So whenever he was he was woken up, he became combative. And then got to talk about he was going to kill himself. And don't forget, she's the same woman who wanted us to believe that he had uh, an, a hallucinogenic drug in his system. She making up her own story. Now... Bobby supposedly left this trailer and there was a witness who said that they saw Bobby crawling in culverts behind the school and quoted autopsy witnesses as saying surveillance video showed him alone near the area where his body was found. So I was like, uh, wait a minute, pause. So somebody saw Bobby crawling in culverts behind the school. Okay. Let's, let's, let's look at something real quick. Look at this map. Now, where I have that picture of Janet, point A, that's where she lives. And then where I have the picture of Bobby with that red line, that's where Bobby's body was found. He wasn't found that far from her house. So when this witness said that they saw him crawling through the culverts behind the school, I thought to myself, what school? So then, based off this map right here, I put a blue X on the schools, okay? We got the one up in the um, far left-hand corner, which is the high school. We got the one that's um, on the far right. That's the elementary. And then at the bottom of your screen, there's a blue X. And this is actually a banquet hall, but it's called at the school or at the old school or something like that so but it's not a school it's a banquet hall okay so my thing is this exactly where did this witness see him hmm now if we just go with the elementary and the high school neither one of those schools are are that close to where they found Bobby I mean so, if this witness is correct, y'all mean to tell me he was just running around out there? He 30 minutes from home. He don't know this area. It just, it don't feel right. And it almost made it feel like, you know, was he being chased? You know? Now, at the start of this investigation, Janet told them that Bobby left her house alone. And then after that, it gets hazy, says Haley. Why Bobby left or what time he left is unclear. The only thing that was consistent with what Janet was telling them was the fact that she picked him up and brought Bobby back to her place. After that, nothing. And I was like, um, okay, so why now is Bobby's family attorney telling us this? Allegedly, they went and looked for him for a little while and then decided, you know what? I guess he gone, even though he's 30 minutes from his house. Oh, so now the story is that Janet and them went looking for him? Hmm? Did, did they find him? I mean, I'm just saying. It all seems so strange. That's why I want to know exactly what this witness saw when he was talking about, you know, he was crawling around behind these schools, behind some school. What exactly did you see? And then not only that, when this witness saw Bobby, did he have his clothes on? Because just in case you missed that little bit of information, Bobby was found naked. They wanted us to believe he had this psychotic episode and came up out his clothes. I don't believe that. I don't. Did the police even find Bobby's clothes? And if so, where? Where exactly 
Did they find his clothes? Were they near his body? Hmm? Because you also have to understand that the only way they found Bobby was by pinging his phone. So you want me to believe he, he butt naked, but he got his phone? Okay. What's sad about that is based on our own independent investigation, we were able to prove that Kawan Charles was alive uh, at least the next day. Okay, so wait a minute. So Bobby leaves Janet trailer Friday night, October the 30th. The family attorney saying that they can prove that Bobby was alive on Saturday. Hmm? Ain't that what he just said? Or am I tripping? He said they could prove he was he was alive the next day, which would have been Saturday. So was he laying out there all that time? Oh man. If a 15 year old child ran away from your house and saying, you know what? Oh, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going crazy. And you don't call his mama. You don't call his daddy. You don't even call the police until a day and a half later on your lunch break. Okay, wait a minute. Pause. Y'all, I did not know that Janet called the police about Bobby. Didn't even know that until I just heard that family attorney say it. And he said that she called the police a day and a half later. So I'm like, um, so we know he went missing on Friday. So what, a day and a half after that? Because that would be right around Sunday, okay? Think about this. He leaves her house Friday. Saturday, the family attorney said that they could prove that Bobby was still alive at some point on Saturday. And then Janet just so happened to want to call the police on what, Sunday? After he died. That's what I'm saying. It's all too strange. How convenient. You understand what I mean? How convenient. That was the, my, my first thought was how convenient. I wonder if that was before or after. Janet and them bleached the car. Don't forget about that. Uh -huh. Well, and then the mother, my son went to get in her car, but it smelled strong like bleach. And oh. she told my son, she said, you can't smoke in the car because we bleached it. Oh. And then from what I can understand, he told my son that they found your son's body in a sugar cane field behind their house. Yeah. That whole situation about bleaching the car really bothers me. Because Janet had already admitted to the fact that she went and picked Bobby up. So she's already placing him inside her car. So of course they would find hair or, you know. So bleach the car for what? Timing is everything. Everything. And not only that, the same little boy that said, remember, um, he told us that when Bobby and, and Janet and them got back to that trailer, he left. And he left because he said they was tripping off mushrooms. This is the same little boy that's back days later trying to smoke in the car. Hmm? He back. We need him. For sure. That's why I'm not understanding how when they arrested Janet, they're only charging her with failure to report a missing child, and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. And I'm like, really? That's it? There's more to this story. But by Louisiana law, failure to report a missing child. If the child is found dead or determined to be dead, then the offender shall be imprisoned at hard labor for not less than two years, nor more than 50 years without benefit of parole, probation, or suspension of sentence, and fine not more than $50,000. I mean, I just, I, I pray this lady don't get away with this. Because like I said, there's more to the story. And we know she didn't report Bobby missing until a day and a half later. You know? And then 
as far as contributing to the delinquency of a minor um, by Louisiana law, it says whoever commits the crime of contributing to the delinquency of a juvenile shall be fined not more than $500 or imprisoned for not more than six months or both. Come on, man. There's more to the story. And I pray to God that it come out. Yes, I should have called the cops. I should have went further. Yeah, Janet. You should have called the cops sooner. You should have went further. So we got a question why you didn't do that. Why didn't you do it? Instead, you lying. We got you moving out. You bleaching cars. So if, if Janet didn't do anything to Bobby, is she covering for somebody else? Because we've placed four people in that trailer when Bobby was there. And that was Janet, Gavin, the stepfather, and that little boy that had his mama call Roxanne. Hmm? Somebody knows what happened to Bobby. What y'all think? He wasn't too high, too drunk, slipped and fell <laughs> into a foot and a half of water and just didn't know where he was at and drowned himself. Uh, further, we know he had no underlying health conditions. This was not an aneurysm, a heart attack. Um, he did not have epilepsy, anything that could have rendered him incapacitated in that condition. So what does that leave us? It leaves us to homicide. So make the news, nigga, and watch what happens. If you make it over here on this channel, nigga, we on your ass. Okay.